So, first of all, thank you very much for inviting me. It's actually very nostalgic to see that because I was also part of Studio Universale when I was here. And I actually miss a little bit the group and the Forschung Center. So, I will talk today about uh, the possibilities after the PhD, basically, academia, industry, or startup. Mm -hmm. I will give a bit more focus on startup because this is what I do. I work with different types of startups. And I will start by talking a little bit about myself, my company, and then I want to present to you a survey that I did with people who finished their PhD and what they are doing now. Um, just a little bit about myself very quickly. I am originally from Brazil. I live uh, near Darmstadt right now. I'm married, I have two kids, boy and a girl. And my education is that I finished my PhD. I did my work here in the Fashion Centrum, but my professor was from Liège. So I got my PhD from Belgium. Uh, I did my master in the north of Germany, in Master of Science and Engineering. And in Brazil, I have done my bachelor in Physics and Medical Physics. Can everybody hear me? Do you guys want to come and sit here? There are lots of places. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> so my professional background as an entrepreneur is that now I'm one year with Bond Consulting, it's my company, I founded it one year ago. I was working uh, for four years in also a company that I had in Brazil during my bachelor. I have a side business that I used to organize uh, events, big events actually. And it was six years I was working in the shop of my mother, actually. I started working when I was actually 12, <laughs> after school. So I was always a bit involved in this commercial area also. And as a scientist, I was here for four and a half years in the Fashion Centrum, from which one year I was on maternity leave. And in Brazil also, I spent three years doing research in several institutions. So now let me tell you a little bit about the company that I founded, Bon Consulting. Uh, I started in November 2014, and it was supposed to be actually just a side business while I was looking for a job. Uh, basically just technology consulting. I thought, okay, you know, it doesn't look so good in your CV if you're just looking for a job, so let me just put a website online, you know, pretend that I'm doing something. But then actually we started to have return, and I thought, man, this is kind of nice, you know, I, I kind of like it. And then in January, I decided to, to not accept some job offers that I was given and actually just do bond consulting full time. Of course, we spent some time still finding out what is really our business model, if we should start uh, only, if we should work only with technology consulting, what should we do? And we came to the conclusion that actually our strength is to work with high tech hardware startups and investors. So it's a very small market, but it's a very selected market that still there is lots of opportunities to work there. Uh, the services that we offer is like consulting, product development, coaching, and a few companies there is also asking us to be co-founders. So we're also working on it. And I want to show you a little bit about our projects. Uh, I'm not putting here the name of the companies because we signed some NDAs. So we cannot really talk too much about the projects, uh, but with one company that is in the solar cell industry, we are doing some um, business plan and product market fit consulting, and in the future we also do coaching for them. Um, ABC Medical is also not the real name, but we are considering being co-founders of this company. Uh, Bond Events is Actually, alpha testing, I just started now because I saw also some opportunity in the market there, and I'm also testing that. And our other big project is actually that we develop a camping stove, uh, and we are also going in this area. We entered the IP just October <coughs> last year, and this is basically our baby. It's actually a camping stove, wooden base, and it's very different because it doesn't produce soot or anything. So you can see that it's like, all over, <laughs> so, several different things, and it's, it's very exciting, very new. Um, so, what do people uh, think when they think about startups? I actually saw on a website something that, <laughs> that was actually a bit funny. 
It was saying, you live your life the way you want it. Uh, you live free and self-determined, and you do what you love. Actually, when I read that, I started laughing a lot because uh, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> just not, it's a lot of work, and uh, yeah, you do what you love, but for the love of God, I don't love accounting, and I have, have to do accounting every month for my company, because it's too small, so I do it myself, you know. Uh, Self-determined, yeah, free, not so much, you have this pressure, you have to start making money soon, you know. And well, if I wanted to live my life the way I wanted, I would actually be there, you know, <laughs> being served some coconut water. Uh, with my family, but uh, no, I honestly don't know the next time that I will have vacation. I cannot plan vacation because if some project shows up, I will just run and grab it, you know. So th this is too much of a dream what is written on this website. Uh, reality is a bit different. So basically, when my husband was about to quit his job to also join me in the company, one person turned to him and said, hey, congrats, you promoted yourself to CEO. And the other person, Opa, okay, in the exact same week said, let's party or not Hartsphere. Oh. <laughs> so for the people who are not from Germany and they don't know what Hartsphere is actually this, well, summarizing is like poor people, you know, that need to some help from the government. And honestly, the reality of having your startup is somewhere in between, actually both, you know, especially if you're starting a lean startup, that it's like with low budget and so on, uh, you are the CEO of a poor company. That's basically it. You might have a lot of money three years from now and so on, but you might also not have. So it's a bit risky. Um, so another graph that kind of describes kind of very precisely is if you have like, you know, you're extremely sad or extremely happy and this is where you were before you started your company, you're like, woohoo, I'm your boy, I'm my own boss, I have a great idea, I'm sure this will be great, I'll have several clients, and this will be so awesome. And then, well, <laughs> you'll see reality is actually a little bit different, you realize that, uh, no, you know. And then you start experimenting with, you know, some of, of a prototypes and you want to see what is going on and then you kind of hit the bottom actually. And then you say, okay, let's try something else. So then suddenly you start discovering your market, you start seeing what it really works and you finally found your market fit for your product and then starts to scale up. So this timeline can be vary from a few months to several years. Uh, so, you know, if you have a great idea and you want to start your own company, great, come and talk to us. But no, that is like, it's very, a lot of work. Yeah. Where are you now? No? <laughs> 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 yes, I'm very happy actually. <laughs> Actually, I, I sometimes have a feeling that these lows were a bit lower than that, you know. And suddenly you have like a client and you're like, wow, they're happy with our job and stuff. And then suddenly you don't have any client at all. It's like very difficult. Um, so let's compare a little bit, like now to industry and actually to academia. Uh, start off something like that, basically. It's just pushing this huge rock up a mountain. And <laughs> it's difficult because, you know, if you're sick in this situation, you, if you lie down, the rock just comes and crush you <laughs> a little bit. So it's not so easy. So it has several points that are positive, but several negative ones. Corporate, <laughs> people actually, I like this thing from entrepreneurs to fail, because they describe corporate a little bit like a hamster wheel. Sometimes you feel like you're running, 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 you're not getting somewhere, but also you have this positive side that is something a bit more certain, you know, or at least that's what we think when we're PhDs, we're like, oh man, I don't want that postdoc because now it's only two years and then, well, your job as a postdoc is to look for another job, <laughs> right? Um, so everything has pros and cons. 
So basically I was wondering if everyone felt like me, this question on when I'm finishing my PhD, what I will do next, you know? So basically, sorry, just a second. Yes, there is more seats here, do you want to join us? <laughs> Um, so basically I contacted all the people that I knew from my network uh, who had finished a PhD and I had some very nice replies uh, and I did a, a small survey and actually there were 37 participants and 73% of them were from Italy. Main question is where are people now? Where did they, did they end up? So, who thinks here that most went to companies? <laughs> <laughs> who thinks here that most went to academia? Okay, you guys are wrong. <laughs> so, right now we have 51% of these people who participated in the survey are still in academia or they went back actually to academia. That's actually quite interesting. Uh, a few became a patent attorney. Uh, well, a very small part is startup, and this very small part is actually me, my husband, and a friend from here, actually. <laughs> and uh, some ended up in the industry. So, 70%, this is a very interesting number for me, 70% of the people actually already changed jobs one or more time, and those are people who finished the PhD maybe a just a few years ago. Uh, here I will explain you a little bit. A2A is academia to academia, so 50% of the 70% went from academia to academia, so they did a postdoc and then another postdoc and maybe uh, an <laughs> investigator would be this hard. 19% uh, went from academia to industry, so they did a postdoc and then they went to industry. 4% uh, academia from startup, of course, very small. Uh, from industry to academia, and that was something interesting for me. There are people who left their PhD, they went to, to industry, and then they came back to do a postdoc. And there are some people who went from industry to startup. Well, he's sitting right there. Actually, it's my husband. Um, so you can see that, you know, Basically, what you do directly after your PhD <coughs> is not what you'll be doing for the rest of your life. You saw 70% of people just changed. You know? uh, so now the question that we want to know how long it took for the people to actually get a position after the PhD. Some people got immediately, and you see some people up to 12 months, up to one year. So, and you see that the data is very scattered in academia and in academia, actually. And these people who got a job immediately after leaving is because they continue, so 50% of them continue in their institutes after they submitted the thesis. And this was very good because it kind of helped them bridge the time. They, had, they submitted the thesis, then they could think more clearly like what to do after, and then they just stop their contract here in the Forschung Centrum and then went directly to their next job. And how many applications were sent? Mm -hmm. So, who here thinks that you should send less than 10 applications to get a job? <laughs> <laughs> who here thinks that between 10 and 20 is sufficient? Who here thinks that above 20 is too much? So you should still continue sending applications above 20. <laughs> so these numbers might be interesting. Just notice here that I come from minus 8 to 100. So minus 8 is actually people that were offered several positions. And you see here, green is academia, so they were offered several postdoc positions. Up to eight. There was one person that was just offered eight postdoc positions after. Yes. So, and then some people sent between zero and five. It's okay. Between five and ten, ten and twenty, twenty and thirty. 
we can see people who went to academia and stay uh, and went to industry. Up 200, right? people who were very motivated and they really knew what they wanted and they wanted that position and they kept standing until they got it. <laughs> so, and again, the data is like very scattered. Like most of the people who went to industry actually stand a bit more, but still it's like everything can happen. So, who think that most of the people who are happy now with their jobs is because they have a very nice position in industry? <laughs> <laughs> who here think that they are happy with their job because they have a very nice position in academia? <laughs> <laughs> and this was a data that for me was actually very, very interesting. <coughs> It's basically the same. <laughs> people who are happy, people who are more or less, and people who are not so happy with their jobs that they are now. <laughs> so I think for me the conclusion is like, it doesn't really matter what you do directly after the PhD. It is not the end of your life. You know, you can change, you can continue. <laughs> Just go with the flow. <laughs> And now if we go back to this, let's see what is the pros and cons of the, the, the positions. Here, I think that everyone, at least when I was doing my PhD, everyone was always saying, oh, it's terrible because you'll have these short contracts, right? So this feeling, I think it's not really about the, the short contracts, I think it's a little bit about this feeling of insecurity. Um, I have to say, I actually will share, do I have time? Yes. I will actually share a little bit of some stories that we had that uh, will give you an idea that if you go to companies, you have the feeling of security, but you might not have actually the security. So this actually happened to us. Uh, Dieter started working at Science, very nice German company, great to the employees and so on, and we moved, and yeah, did I say it correctly? Carl Science. Science. Yes. So, <laughs> we had this feeling, okay, we moved there, we rent a nice apartment because it's a nice salary and so on and so on. Okay, great. Then suddenly, we were living like five minutes walking distance from the company. Suddenly, they were just, oh, guess what? Oh, let's move the company, the location of the company. Maybe we go to Yuna or maybe we'll be in the surroundings. I was like, <laughs> and so we were we were panicking a bit. We had were just we had just moved. The people who were working in this company had just bought houses. They had partners who had fixed positions also in the region. So although we had the feeling of security, the security was actually not there. I have another friend who was working in Switzerland, also just like bought a huge house right now because he's working in a huge company and so on. Suddenly he's like, hey, guess what? I just got the news that maybe they will sell the whole department, my whole department of the company, and it's a huge company. And well, maybe I'll be unemployed and with uh, one million back in the bank account. Woohoo! You know, so there, there are very positive things and there are very negative things on anywhere you go. <coughs> Uh, and this was really the great part of the survey was which advices you would give for people who are finishing their PhD now. Some people say, go to industry after postdoc. Go to industry directly after the PhD. Don't go to industry. <laughs> <laughs> go directly to postdoc. This was a person that actually went from PhD to company and then wanted to, to go to postdoc. Use postdoc to think about the next step. Okay. <laughs> Do more networking, more teaching, and more publications. So these were people who actually want to have an academia life, want to become professors. Choose a nice location. Someone who actually went to a city in the US and the person is not very happy there. Important <laughs> also. Uh, start from the time it's right, even during the PhD, this was the person that actually did a startup. 
Uh, be more careful with financial commitments. Yes, this is something that actually we have. If we ever knew that we were going to start our own company, probably we would have gotten an apartment that the rent is not so expensive, but we didn't know. And uh, don't give up your dreams. There were some advices that uh, pop up very often, actually, which is go abroad after the PhD. Uh, get more knowledge about HR, prepare more for interviews or get coaching. And above all, get more non-academic qualifications. So people who were international, they suggest that you have really, if you want to stay in Germany, you need to learn German. Otherwise, you will not get a job in a company. Uh, get programming, learn more about IT, about project management, about the corporate structure. And Something that really pops out is know yourself, and this is something that I really say, tell people, like, know yourself. Do you think you will be happy in academia? Do you think you will be happy in a company? Uh, I could go on and on about how we use, actually, product management techniques to evaluate the companies that we will work with and the people that we will work with, but, well, I don't have the time right now, so basically just based on this survey and on you people, I actually just plan something out of nowhere that I still don't know how to call, so I call jobs for docs. It's basically just a workshop that gives you self-assessment, corporate structure, how to find a position, and how to send applications, and so on. And this is, this is alpha testing, you know? I, I'm not sure about the date, I'm not sure about the place, and, or the name, <laughs> but if I have enough pre-applications for this, uh, I might definitely try to do this event. Yes, now the advice that really, really got me thinking about it and I was really happy about it. Being said, it's not about making the right choices, but to make your choices become right. So basically I wanted to thank everyone who <laughs> participated on the survey. Lots of doctors, as you can see. Yes. <laughs> And I want to thank you for your attention and if you have any questions, you're welcome.